In this problem, we are going to graph this equation, y equals 4 minus the absolute value of x. Um, and then we're going to use geometry to find the total area, the net area, two different things. I'll explain that in just a second. Um, within this domain here, within this little region between negative 5 and positive 5, and this region that we're looking for, the total area, is going to be the area of the region between our function and the x-axis. Right, so I'll show you what that looks like graphically. Um, let me rewrite this equation for you. Um, if it's okay with you, maybe it's easier to see something like this. How about negative square root of x? And I'll put the plus 4 here at the end. I'm just going to move this to the back side, which is really just a plus 4. Okay? What allows me to do that, by the way, is the commutative property for addition. Okay, um, I've got a graph here. <coughs> And let's take a quick second to graph that equation. All right. Again, our equation is um, y equals negative absolute value of x plus 4. Well, let me point something out here. I have a ruler. And that is this. If our equation, right, if our equation was simply y equals the square root of x. I'm going to cover up everything else, right? If it was just the square root of x, you should know from maybe pre-calculus days or something like that, that the square root of x is just a is just a v, right? Kind of looks something like that. That's what the function looks like. And a negative sign in front of, right, here we go, a negative sign in front of that square root of x really is just a reflection over the x-axis, right? So it's just a reflection over the x-axis, so it makes it look more like this now. Flip it over, there you go. All right, so that's what a that's what this part of the function looks like, just a negative square root of x. I mean, uh, absolute value of x, sorry. Um, what does the plus 4 do? Well, that's a vertical shift. It just shifts this up one, two, three, four places. So this is what our equation, this is what our function looks like. It looks like this right there. And I've got a ruler here, so I'm just going to draw that in real quick right now. Let's see if we we'll move those out of the way. Right, so here's what the left side looks like, and here's what the right side looks like. Something like this. I don't have to be too, too exact. Okay, so that's what it looks like, our function. Now let's go back to what they're asking. They're asking us to find the total area of the region that is bounded by negative 5 and positive 5 and between our function and the x-axis. So let's talk about the negative 5 and positive, positive 5 first. Do you see that Right, we're not going to go any further past positive 5 and we're not going to go any further past negative 5 and we have to stay within our x-axis and the function itself. So I'll do a little shading here in green. Don't know if it shows up as on green as your screen or not but I'm using a green marker here. And so bounded by the x-axis and our function, we have a triangle sitting up top here. Okay, But I'm not quite out to the 5 and the negative 5 yet. Let's go out a little bit further and do you see, maybe I'll do this in red, do you see that bounded by the x-axis and this are, we have a little bit of a triangle sitting right there. Same thing over here, bounded by the x-axis and our function, we have a little bit of a triangle sitting right there as well. Okay, So the first part of this question is asking us to find the total area the total area. The next part of our question is going to ask us to find the net area. All right, I'll talk a little bit more about the net, but let's first find the total area for this picture. Well, hope you easily see that I've got three triangles, right? I've got this little red triangle here on the left, I've got a big green triangle, and I've got this little red triangle right there. And since you know that the uh, formula for an area of a triangle, I'll do this right here, is equal to one half the base times the height. All right, so our total area is going to be equal to um, one half the base times the height of the large triangle plus one half the base times the height of the sm one of the small triangles plus a half base times the height of the third triangle. So let's see. For the big triangle here, my base length scoot that over we can see it again All right this base length right here is eight spaces right zero through four that's four five six seven eight so I've got a, a base of eight and my height is four 
my height is 4. So for the big triangle, I have 1 half a base of 8 times height of 4. Uh, let's see, for the small triangle here, this red one over on the far side, do you see that it has a base of 1 and a height of 1? So it's 1 half base of 1, height of 1, and the same thing for the other red triangle on the far right side of our graph here. So, working all of this out, let's see, 2 goes into 8 four times. Working all this out, I've got a 16 coming from the big triangle. I've got a half coming from each of the small triangles for a total area, right, 16 plus a half plus a half, total area of 17. Okay, that's not so bad. Now, if I was interested, though, in the net area, Right. If I'm interested in the net area, this formula here is going to change just a little bit on us, okay? And that is <clears throat> any triangle that, or any area that is above the x-axis, like I've shaded here in green, is going to be a positive area. And anything that is below the x-axis, like these two guys over here, is going to be a negative area. Okay, so that changes the formula or equation just a little bit. It's actually 16 minus a half minus a half. And again, I'm using minus because these two were below the x-axis, right? And since the 16 was above, that's a positive. So in this case, I really have 16 minus 1, which our net area is 15. So I hope that makes sense. Um, now, this might not really appear as a calculus type of a question, but in fact, it actually is. And that's because if you wanted to, you could find the integral of this function here, you could integrate this function, right, you could integrate that between negative 5 and positive 5, <clears throat> and it's not so off the wall here, let me write let me write it this way here, it's not so off the wall right, with respect to x. Um, to actually do this integral if you wanted to, knowing what the picture looks like now, you could actually integrate this much of the picture. I'm just going to cover up the left-hand side. You could integrate this much of the picture between 0 and 5, where your function, this function right here, is simply negative x plus 4, right? It's just a line. It has a positive intercept of 4, and it has a slope of negative 1. So you could integrate this right here between Right, between 0 and 5 if you wanted to. Again, you'd have to integrate that, okay? You could do the same thing on the other side, cover this up, right? But this picture is a little bit different. This function is a little bit different. Um, in this case, the function would be uh, positive x plus 4. And you would be integrating that between negative 5 and 0, okay? So you could actually do it in two different steps if you wanted to. But uh, maybe geometry is a little bit easier for something like triangles. Hope that helps.